So the main reason to get a zoom eyepiece instead of one with a fixed focal length is usually the flexibility of having multiple focal lengths at your disposal, all in one eyepiece. This makes them easy to use and potentially saves a lot of money in the process. But this also comes with accepting some major drawbacks, such as a narrow field of view at longer focal length settings and an overall lower image quality when compared to fixed focal length counterparts thanks to the much more complex optical design. Today I have the new SV230 Super Zoom eyepiece from Siboni here with me and together we are going to check if in this case the aforementioned drawbacks outweigh the positive aspects or if it's the other way around. So sit down, relax, grab a cup of coffee because this is going to be a good one. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to another video review. <laughs> I believe that every single one of us wondered at some point about how awesome it would be to have a single eyepiece that can do it all, featuring excellent image quality while covering all the focal length steps one would ever need for their setup. Of course, this is only wishful thinking and such an eyepiece does not exist. But there is an optical design that at least on paper aims to reach this ideal. I'm talking about zoom eyepieces. The latest zoom eyepiece to hit the market is the SV230 from Sviboni. And at first glance it seems to do a lot of things right. So when they got in touch with me and asked if I would be interested in reviewing it, I said yes right away. Now, while I really appreciate them sending one over for the purpose of this review, this won't color my opinion about the product and definitely won't change the outcome of this review. So with this out of the way, let's see what's inside the box. Opening it up, we see a well padded black pouch and inside we find the eyepiece itself. The first thing that immediately becomes obvious is how big the eyepiece really is, followed by its weight when picked up. I somehow didn't expect it to have the size and heft of a mid-sized 2-inch eyepiece. At 500 grams, this is one of the heavier zoom eyepieces I have tested so far. Responsible for this weight is the all-metal build and the 9 lens elements in 6 groups housed inside. So make sure that your mount and telescope can accommodate the extra weight. That is a lot of glass, which also means that there are a lot of air to glass surfaces that have the potential to generate unwanted internal reflections. Luckily here, all these surfaces are fully multi-coated and all lens edges are darkened as well to improve contrast even further. At the top, we find a soft and foldable eye guard surrounding the generous top lens, which features a 30 mm wide diameter. The rubber eye cap can also be removed entirely to reveal an M43 T mount underneath, which can be used for attaching an astigmatic corrector lens in order to help better correct the views if necessary. Moving towards the bottom of the eyepiece, we see a wider rubber ring for selecting the focal length and the markings for all the focal length steps between 8mm and 20mm. The focal length selector feels smooth and precise, letting you choose the exact value you need. It also features a satisfying click-stop mechanism, which allows you to operate it in complete darkness only by sound and feel, which is quite nice. Here is a sound test. The bottom part of the eyepiece features a 2 inch adapter ring, which allows you to use the eyepiece without the need of a 1.25 inch focuser adapter. This might come in handy if you want to shave off a precious few millimeters of light path by bypassing the 1.25 inch adapter altogether. Both the 1.25 inch and 2 inch nose pieces feature threadings for attaching filters. Now if you are having trouble right now seeing the threads for attaching filters on the 2 inch adapter ring, that is because my review unit doesn't have any. 
but Sviboni confirmed that the retail version will feature these threads. So the SV230 seems to be quite the complete package. It's also very well built. There is no rattling inside and it does have a premium feel to it when holding it in hand. Also, I must say that I'm quite a fan of the two-tone look of the eyepiece with the black anodized aluminum for the top and the lighter brushed stainless steel for the bottom part. So on paper, this is shaping up to be a decent zoom eyepiece, but how good is the optical performance? Well, let's find out. I've had the SV230 for over a month now and was able to test it on multiple occasions from my backyard under both the four skies and I paired it with an f5 12 inch Dobsonian telescope and an f7 refractor. While on the refractor I also used a quality 90 degree prism diagonal from Bader Planetarium to eliminate any potential bottlenecks. The first time I looked through it, my attention was immediately drawn to the very wide field of view, which I did not expect on a zoom eyepiece. The 72 degrees at 8 mm are definitely enough to fill my whole field of vision, conveying a very immersive viewing experience. This combined with the soft rubber eye guard and the generous eye relief of 19 mm make observing with this eyepiece a joy. Since we're talking about the field of view. I should also mention that like with almost any other zoom eyepiece, the width of the field of view decreases the longer the focal length gets. This is one of the major drawbacks of zoom eyepieces in general, but here I have to say that the SV230 fares better than most other zoom eyepieces, because even though it does lose several degrees as you increase the focal length, the field of view never gets too narrow and the tunnel vision normally present on zoom eyepieces with similar focal length ranges never sets in. At 57 degrees for the longest focal length setting, the field of view is wide enough to enjoy some low magnification views of the night sky. Helping with the immersiveness is also the flatness of the field of view. While not perfectly flat, it's still good enough so that I never had the feeling of looking through a fishbowl. This is because Fiboni baked a field flattener right into the eyepiece. Not only this, but the SV230 also features a double-sided aspherical lens which does a great job as well at correcting the image, especially around the edges of the field of view, as you can see here. The only thing I don't like about the field of view is that there is a slight tendency to produce dark spots or kidney beaning if I deviate too much with my eye from the optimal viewing position. This means that the SV230 isn't as forgiving as I would have hoped for when it comes to eye positioning, but luckily this effect becomes less visible the slower the telescope's focal ratio is. Another aspect that usually doesn't get enough credit when talking about zoom eyepieces in general, but is definitely worth mentioning, is whether the eyepiece is par focal meaning that it has the ability to switch between the different focal lengths without or with only minimal focus adjustments being necessary. I believe that this aspect greatly improves the viewing comfort and I was glad to see that the SV230 is indeed a par focal eyepiece. There are only slight adjustments needed to the focuser when skipping multiple focal length steps at once. Alright, now let's check out some quick shots taken through the SV230 using my phone and my F7 refractor. To better illustrate the optical performance of this eyepiece, I've only taken daytime shots of a distant target. Taking photos with my phone at night through the eyepiece leads to very inconsistent results and these are far from what the eye can actually see in reality. The resulting images aren't at all representative for the quality of the views produced by the eyepiece, so I'll stick to daytime photos only. As you can see, the views are really good, and not only for zoom eyepieces, but for eyepieces in general. Brightness and contrast levels are very good, while sharpness is excellent. There is some light color fringing visible though, especially in high contrast situations, like on this chimney for example. But this comes mostly from the refractor's objective not being able to fully correct the incoming light and not from the eyepiece itself. 
Overall, the views delivered by the SV230 are well corrected and the incoming light doesn't seem to lose too much information when passing through the different lenses of this eyepiece. But how does it compare to other eyepieces on the market? Well, if I were to compare the optical performance of the SV230 with that of a fixed focal length eyepiece, I would place it somewhere in the upper mid-tier lower premium segment, performing a bit better than the 82 degree series from Explore Scientific or the Hyperion series from Bader Planetarium. Not quite Pentax or Teleview levels, but not far off either, which is impressive. To better illustrate this, here is an image taken through the SV230 compared to one taken through the 9mm D-Light from Teleview. As you can see, there isn't much difference between the two. I would say that sharpness is similar on both eyepieces, but contrast is a bit better on the SV230, with the D-Light taking the lead in terms of brightness and color accuracy. Comparing it to its sibling, the SV171, the SV230 manages to come out on top in every category but the price. The views delivered by the SV230 are brighter, sharper and better corrected for chromatic aberrations, while featuring improved contrast as well. But the biggest difference lies in the width of the field of view. Here, the narrow field of view of the SV171, especially at a 20mm focal length setting, just can't keep up. The same can be said about build quality. While the SV230 doesn't feature a nice twisting eye guard like the SV171, it more than makes up for it when it comes to the focal length selector and the overall premium feeling when holding it in hand. So while the SV230 costs 4 times as much as the SV171, I think it's still worth it, given the improvements it brings with it. Comparing it to the Hyperion Zoom Mark IV from Bader Planetarium leads to a similar result. Sadly, I don't have that eyepiece anymore and I can only speak from memory, but I seem to recall that the Mark IV is definitely sharper and brighter than the SV171 and therefore comparable to the SV230. The field of view on the SV230 is however significantly wider, especially on the longest focal length setting, and this allows for a more immersive viewing experience. Build quality is also a tad better on the SV230, with it feeling more solid when holding it in hand. The only thing missing on the SV230 is the modularity and compatibility with a vast number of accessories. Here the Mark IV still remains the king of versatility. Costing over a hundred bucks less than the SV230, the Mark IV seems like a very good option here. But if you are looking for great image quality and a wide field of view, then the SV230 should be the better choice. What Siboni managed to deliver here with the SV230 is one of the most complete zoom eyepieces on the market today below 500 bucks. One ready to take on the challenge of being the single eyepiece you will need for like 80% of the situations when you are outside with a telescope. The 400 US dollars full retail price definitely seems like a lot to pay for a zoom eyepiece, especially when one of the major selling points of such an eyepiece is supposedly to be more affordable than a couple of mid-tier fixed focal length alternatives combined. But still, I believe that with respect to image quality, portability and flexibility, the SV230 has everything in order to make a compelling case for itself. Furthermore, Sviboni is known for having special offers from time to time where prices drop quite considerably, making the SV230 even more attractive in such situations. Anyway, that's been it. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe. Also, let me know what you think about the SV230 and Zoom eyepieces in general. I'm very interested in reading your opinions below. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next one.